Hello, I am Dr. Wendy Slatkin, an art historian and the author of the book Portrait of a Community, Selections from the Chafee Community Museum of Art, the CCMA. One of the important roles for the museum is to recognize and preserve the works of the most historically significant artists of the Pomona Valley. By nominating an Artist of the Year, the CCMA raises the public's awareness and appreciation of these distinctive creators. In this series of video portraits, sponsored by CCMA, we are continuing this goal of documenting the careers of their select group of Artists of the Year. Today we are delighted to welcome you into the creative universe of Gina Lawson Egan, CCMA's 2019 Artist of the Year. In her vintage Ontario home, Lawson Egan and her husband John have raised a family in an environment of beauty and complexity. From her backyard studio, she has produced her fascinating, distinctive, and highly innovative body of ceramic sculptures. Lawson Egan received her BFA from the University of Michigan and her MFA at the Claremont Graduate University, where she studied with noted ceramicist Paul Soldner. While a graduate student in the 1980s, she was one of a number of young artists who worked in the Millard Sheets studio with mosaicist Dennis O'Connor. After her studies with Soldner, she benefited directly from the vibrant ceramic art community established in the Pomona Valley after World War II. Lawson Egan's primary medium has always been clay, but her work blurs the distinction between ceramics and sculpture. It combines solid and void, positive and negative space, fully exploiting the three-dimensional possibilities of sculpture and the range of textures and colors that can be achieved in the ceramic medium. Gina Lawson Egan's ceramic sculptures are filled with fantasy images as well as realistic forms and textures. She employs arbitrary juxtapositions of scale to create intriguing images of great originality. Gina and her husband John, who is also an artist, have utilized their property to provide working studio spaces. From her backyard studio and kiln, Lawson Egan has produced her extensive body of sculpture. The yard also becomes an outdoor gallery for storing and displaying the overflow of this production, which has not yet found another home. Well, I'd always wanted to be an artist as a child, but I, when I kind of grew up and went to college, I started studying science. And I think my first semester into community college, um, I took a few courses and then I took one art class and I'm like, I'm done, and I, and I switched to art. <laughs> um, well, I came specifically to study with Paul Soldner, and so, yeah, he was my, he was my pull. That and, the st and I wanted to come to California, so. There wasn't like a whole lot in our household that wasn't done. Like they did everything. 
And so, like, they were able to do everything. And so I kind of grew up in that environment, me and my sisters. So then as we, as we grew up, we kind of became the epitome of that. You know what I mean? All of it, um, both of my sisters, I'm the youngest of three, but um, they're also in the arts um, and really talented. And they both ended up having daughters. And, and then as, as it worked out, they're, they're also artists. And we call it the curse. <laughs> it's like we're, we're just a, a bunch of artists in our family. Um, having that kind of community of artists and going to um, art exhibits, knowing people, I, it, it's kind of wonderful because this area is so fertile with artists and that's great. I love the Chafee Community Museum of Art. They've been wonderful to me and um, it's a great place and it's really close to here. Everything comes from just my own imagination, my own head, but I'm also influenced by um, like work from the ancient Americas, Meso Mesoamerican work, anything old. Like all my favorite artists are very old. <laughs> I usually have like a vision, like some kind of vision that I want to do, and then I make, I start making it, and I'm I'm pretty quick. So, but I don't make work to sell. I make what I want. It's kind of a rule. I like to do what I want, and then um, hopefully that's what I sell. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't like to make um, a bunch of things that I think will sell. When I work in clay, I get lost. Like I, like all of a sudden, like time just goes by, and I don't. It's like I completely lo lose myself when I work and. Like I can work for a really long time and it doesn't matter and that's why I chose it. Like I love getting lost in the medium. I don't know, it's like going on another plane and it's always been like that. So that's what I really like. That's probably why I work so much. <laughs> I always want to be somewhere else. <laughs> I, I do. I don't do that intentionally, but um, I like using a lot of different, I like, you know, using animals, people. I like the dialogue um, that it gives. I like to, it's like I like to tell stories. I feel like my pieces are a, a lot of times suggestive of a story. It gets me working. I work all the time and also like even recently because um, I'm teaching right now and I'm helping students all day long with their work and so I can't wait to get home and get into my studio because I feel like I'm ready. By the time I'm done working I'm ready to, to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's hard to be around clay all day and not be, be working on it. I'm, I, I'm teaching. I'm working with clay all day. I'm helping them with their projects and we're talking about them and they're getting excited and so usually it makes it so that I can't wait to work myself. I'm like I'm dying to get to for them to leave and me to begin, right? So yeah, they're very inspirational. I yeah, it is. It's they I get very I mean, I have students who I feel like they give me ideas too sometimes, you know. So a lot of a lot of my pieces that are you know like maybe this big start from demonstrations from school like I'll, I'm cho I'm showing my students how to make something I start it and then because I like um, making I like showing them what you can do and I like using my pieces to do it because it helps them think outside the box I feel like. I would tell that student to um, just keep keep listening to themselves and stay true to their dreams. You know, you can't always um, you can't always like do what you want in the beginning. Like you have to have a job, you have to you know pay your bills. But I think if you always keep your dream alive, keep it somehow in like like in the horizon, you know what I mean, then you, you, you move towards it. And no matter how long it takes, I feel like if you really want it, that's the way I, that's the, that's, that's the, the way I tell my own kids, like put it out there and, and keep moving towards it. And 
no matter how long it takes, um, you'll get there if you stay the course, right? Gina is comfortable creating works which are either forms of relief sculpture or fully three-dimensional with multiple viewpoints. In 2019, she exhibited both forms of art at the CCMA show, honoring her designation as Artist of the Year. These works reveal her humor and playful imagination, as well as her more sinister take on the stresses of contemporary society. For example, Cell Phone Monster consists of a head crushed between two stylized hands with an expression of terrified, wide-open eyes and mouth in a silent scream. One hand clutches the phone, while a small figure is balanced on its head. This work critiques our attachment to technology in general and cell phones specifically. Cyclone, now in the CCMA collection, is typical of a series of large heads she created between 2016 and 2019. The over life-size female head without neck or plinth rests directly on the table surface. The head has an enigmatic expression directed toward the viewer's right. The frontal view is rather placid and composed, while from the side, with the head in profile, an explosive scene is revealed. An elf with an elongated hat, its peak visible from the front, is bent over and grasping a twisting form, the cyclone of the title. Another female figure is nestled into the area behind the ear of the head, where two massive hobbit feet protrude. That same angle fully reveals the gray glazed vortex of the cyclone, suggesting the force of an inner life concealed by the placid face. In Bird of Paradise, she created a highly tactile surface. The head of this garden gnome becomes the familiar form of the Bird of Paradise so often seen in Southern California. The wistful, saddened expression of the gnome contrasts with the explosive blossom of his head. Shifting angles off the frontal viewpoint reveals hairy arms settled on the bulbous form of the body. This work is an excellent example of Lawson Egan's ability to combine the closely matched realistic forms of the Bird of Paradise flower with the fantasy image of the creature. Lawson Egan likes to combine human and animal forms, often in playful images, such as Dog Tired. While Lawson Egan's work is undeniably original, she bears comparison with the noted sculptor Louise Bourgeois. Bourgeois liked to combine elements in unusual juxtapositions of form and scale, such as this work, which shows a female nude trapped inside the block of her house. Bourgeois' most famous works are her monumental spider series installed around the globe, but here seen in Zurich. The giant mother, called Maman, is a spider who holds her eggs protectively in a sack high up against her body. The shifts between the human and animal realms is one of Bourgeois' themes. We can compare her she-fox with Lawson Egan's The Boss. The Boss also employs surprising shifts of size and merging of human and animal forms. The head with an open mouth full of teeth composed of ghostly masks avoids the viewer's gaze while a bloated male figure with a condescending expression and white tie seems to have sprung directly from the forehead of the figure. This boss of the title is flanked by a female form with a mouse head and a smaller girl mouse hanging off the side. Strange shifts of scale and surprising combinations are important characteristics of bourgeois art seen here in Woman from 2005. Lawson Egan also exploits these elements in Underdog, Howling at the Moon. In this work, she combines the large head format of Cyclone with her precise depictions of animals into a humorous inversion of human-animal hierarchies. Lawson Egan's sculptures have been shown in either solo or two-person exhibits on a regular basis since 2002, and her works have been included annually in group exhibitions since 2007. Her sculpture is in the collections of the American Museum of Ceramic Arts in Pomona, Amoka, 
the Sam and Beverly Maloof Collection in Alta Loma, and a number of both public and private collections. Like many other sheet studio artists, she is a dedicated teacher who has taught ceramics at a number of local colleges, currently Cal Poly Pomona. By pursuing her individual artistic vision, Lawson Egan can be best understood as the inheritor of the strong traditions of women artists loosely grouped under the movement of surrealism. These artists were included in the 2012 groundbreaking exhibition at LACMA, In Wonderland, The Surrealist Adventures of Women Artists in Mexico and the United States. However, most of those artists used two-dimensional media, painting or photography, rather than sculpture. Like Andre Mendenhall Mahoney, this sets Gina Lawson Egan apart from the surrealist women of earlier generations. Settled into her Ontario home, Lawson Egan has been able to let her imagination flow in a river of original but accessible creativity. The ceramics community of the Pomona Valley, first nurtured by Millard Sheets in the 1930s, has provided a fertile soil for the growth of her unique artistic vision.